Yo, what is up everybody? It's Jay the Great here and welcome back to another Naruto reaction video here today. And today we have yet another video by the way 6 and as you can tell by the title this is Tobirama versus Sasuke, the real winner. So folks, this is a very intriguing hypothetical. However, respective versions of these characters greatly matter when determining who would win in the event that these two were to battle. Sasuke is actually inferior to Tobirama for quite some time, at least from what we see narratively. So this is a very intriguing one and I'm interested to see what Six has to say about who would win this one in their respective versions. So before I begin, you know, any loves greatly appreciate hit that like button, turn on bell notifications to stay updated with yours truly. And if you're new and you enjoy me and you mess with the kid, make sure to hit that sub button because once you do you become part of the family forever. But let's not waste any more time, screen. Let's see what Six has to say today. An Uchiha versus the number two Uchiha hater behind Donzo, of course. This battle was Pretty extremely much. close to happening during chapter 620 of the manga in episode 366 of the Shippuden anime, wherein Tobirama, after hearing Sasuke would destroy the village, begins to flare up his chakra in what I would consider a classic scene by just lifting his finger. Of the first four Hokage, I think Tobirama gets the least recognition in the community, not because he's bad or anything, but his importance to the story is mentioned very subtly, whereas with Hashirama, who we get to see his entire fight with Madara, and we're constantly told about how special and powerful he is. With his one-of-a-kind wood style, through multiple credible sources like Orochimaru, Yamato, Kabuto, the list goes on. Then you have Hiruzen, who is the Hokage we're introduced to at the beginning of the series, yep. sort of sets the standards for what a Hokage should be. I mean, even in his first fight since his introduction, he sacrifices himself for the better of the village. And then Minato, who has an iconic fight paired with a sacrificial end and being the main character's father, Tobirama, prior to the war, kind of just gets some here and there statements. We don't really know much about him. So today, I hope to give Tobirama some of the recognition he deserves and Sasuke as well. I think a lot of people generally have a very high perception of Sasuke and his capabilities, but at the points that will be mentioned later on in the video, I think he gets overshadowed just a little bit by other characters. This video will feature each combatant in two different forms, which as I said, will be mentioned a bit later into the video, but I'm done rambling now. I know the intro is fairly long, but it seemed necessary. If you like Naruto vs Battles, be sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. I have loads of other vs Battles on my channel you can watch after this one, but let's start. To start off with establishing the forms of the characters, Toby Ramas are just going to be his alive and Edo forms. However, to establish Sasuke's forms, I think it's important to note Sasuke's power growth once he started using the Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke, after developing the Mangekyo, had become consumed with hatred way more than usual, with even his teammate Karin, a censoring shinobi, pointing out how his chakra was different in the early stages of the summit yep. ambush. When Obito talks to Naruto during this very same ambush, he informs Naruto on the story of the Senju and Uchiha alongside Sasuke's motivations. In chapter 462, Obito says that hatred is Sasuke's strongest weapon, friend, true source of power, and his shinobi way. This is very important as it helps show that Sasuke's gaining of hatred throughout the series is correlated with a direct power increase. Although this is made very apparent during the summit when we see Sasuke getting new forms of Susano and getting stronger due to hatred, it tends to be glossed over by some in the war. Sasuke after gaining a huge power surge with the EMS encountered his revived brother not too long after. After the Kabuto fight and Itachi giving Sasuke motivational words and memories, Sasuke claims that his hatred for Konoha has grown even stronger. He then seeks out the Hokage to discover the truth and ends up with a more revolutionary philosophy that we don't get to see until up after the Kaguya battle. The growth of hatred, resolve, and also battle experience would explain how Sasuke is able to later match the likes of KCM Naruto, even after Naruto had showed better chakra control than Minato and Kushina, alongside having Kurama's full cooperation. Later on, we even see Sasuke use abilities like Inferno style, Susano Arrow, which is able to perfectly match KCM Naruto's Super Odama Rasengan and a full-bodied humanoid Susano, both abilities which are absent in the Kabuto fight. We see Sasuke's growth hit its peak before he encounters Hagoromo in the fight against Jubito when he's able to make a perfect Susano, fight alongside Kurama Sage Mo Naruto, and help create the majestic attire Susano without any assistance from Jugo or Naruto's chakra. Now that all that has been established, the forms of Sasuke being used will be his peaks during the Samurai Bridges battle, Kabuto fight, 
in the Jubito versus Allied Shinobi Forces right. fight. Now, Sasuke and Toby Rama both have quite unique power sets compared to their peers in the Shinobi world. To go over a lot of Toby Rama's abilities first, they're pretty simple. His intellect is something that can't be ignored, as he has shown some of the highest feats in this regard within the original Naruto manga. He has created ninjutsu such as the Tensei, Flying Raijin, and Shadow Clone Jutsu. Correct. He shows knowledge on Mount Miyaboku and Sage Mode, but this is likely due to his elder brother being a Sage Mode user. It's also been noted by Madara that it's Toby Rama's MO to strike an opponent when they perceive that they have already won the battle implying that to an extent he's a crafty fighter. He has shown Kage level water ninjutsu even in his weakened Edo state in part 1 while only using one hand seal for each, showing high levels of chakra control as well. We see more uses of water ninjutsu in the war arc with his ability to shoot water needles and sever and pierce the god tree. Tobirama helps create the four crimson ray formation barrier ninjutsu in chapter 631 which is stated to require four Hokage class shinobi to create and to be dozens of times stronger than the four purple flames formation that contained the battle between Hiruzen and Orochimaru. Considering right. Tobirama is putting in one fourth of the work of this jutsu that's dozens of times above the sound fours, it's likely he has the capability of creating barriers six times above that one that contained the battle between two Sanin level shinobi. While maintaining this barrier, Tobirama creates two shadow clones which he says is an embarrassment and is likely nerfed due to having to help maintain the barrier. He has shown high proficiency with the Flying Rising Jutsu, which likely led to him boasting the fastest speed of any shinobi during his time. Using this Flying Rising, he's able to simultaneously teleport Minato and Naruto using their Karam avatars at the same time. Tobiroma's usage of the Edo Tensei Jutsu hasn't been shown to be something he can do on a whim without any preparation and later uses of it by users such as Kabuto and Orochimaru have been confirmed or implied to be much superior than his. We also don't know who he did revive using the jutsu, so either way it won't be considered in this battle. One of Tobirama's most powerful if not the most powerful jutsu that he has in his arsenal is the tandem explosive tags. Introduced in chapter 639, it's referred to as his jutsu that he used in conjunction with his Edo summonings in the past to clear out battlefields. Tobirama claims this is the first time he's ever used the jutsu himself, and the fourth data book corroborates this. The description reads, tags that summon more tags that then explode, a special explosion tag. The second Hokage developed this for the purpose of combining it with impure world reincarnation. Upon activation, due to the devastating explosion, it is highly probable that the jutsu caster will be caught in it. If a live person performs the technique, death is inevitable, for it is a blast technique that sacrifices one's life. So this devastating jutsu will be used for Edo Tobirama and not a live Tobirama, alongside any of his Edo Tensei right, stamina it's a last and resort immortality type abilities. Of ability, the so. last ability to cover for Tobirama is the Bringer of Darkness. The Bringer of Darkness is a mid to long range A rank ninjutsu that puts a veil of darkness over the opponent blinding the opponent and leaving them vulnerable to attacks. Although Tobirama's usage is anime only in episode 72, and Hashirama uses it in the manga and is the only listed user in the second data book, however, the fourth data book lists Hashirama as a user of the five basic nature transformation and yang, while Tobirama is listed as a user of the five basic natures plus yin and yang. This would be very weird as Hashirama has literally used a yin release jutsu in front of our very own eyes. You can say that Kishimoto either forgot to give Hashirama yin and wanted him to be a yang user for the sake of some narrative. Regardless, it wouldn't be too far fetched to say Tobirama has the jutsu as it was probably developed to counter the Sharingan during the Warring States period. To now go over Sasuke's abilities, I'm just going to go through a quick synopsis of his abilities before the summit. It goes without saying that Sasuke has been shown to be proficient in fire and lightning style ninjutsu, of course. Genjutsu, Kenjutsu, Shuriken Jutsu, and of course his Sharingan. Yep. The Sharingan is one of the three great dojutsu that gives the user enhanced perception Genjutsu and the ability to copy Jutsu. Sasuke's Sharingan is especially gifted as even Orochimaru said that Sasuke can see and conceal things with his Sharingan that even Itachi could never dream of. He shows the capability of x-ray vision and seeing chakra and color in his fight with Deidara. In terms of Genjutsu, he has shown the ability to enter the subconscious of Jinchuriki such as Naruto and suppress pieces of Kurama's chakra. His intelligence has always been one of his greatest strengths since his introduction. Sasuke is even given a section in the third data book on his tactical ability that really describes how great he truly is. 
He has the keen ability to observe and analyze his opponent's power while remaining calm. He carefully crafts the path to victory and will use anything from his wide arsenal of skills and ninjutsu to win a battle and would even hurt himself to give himself a win, placing him in a special class of shinobi. Feats such as setting up the Kirin in the middle of his battle with Itachi, cooperating his strategy with Naruto to free Kakashi from Zabuza without any form of verbal or visual communication, and setting up a plan with Suigetsu by using Manda to survive C0, Sasuke has been complimented on his intelligence by even Minato. Somebody Jiraiya considered to have unparalleled shinobi capacity and to be overflowing with talent and intelligence, who figured out how to counter Obito's Kamui in a very short amount of time. With the Mangekyo Sharingan, Sasuke has the abilities of Amaterasu, Kagetsuchi, and Susano. These abilities help give Sasuke a boost to his overall stats such as power, speed, and durability, as well as some other things which we will get to in a minute. In a general sense, Sasuke clearly has a higher capacity than Tobirama, and you can argue his arsenal is superior, but while that might be true, that's not all it takes to win a battle. Before we get into any specifics, I wanted to go over general showings based off things like chakra, narrative, talent, and any lore. In terms of what Sasuke has, he tends to have a consistent power dynamic with Naruto, starting from their encounter at the end of the summit and beyond. The explanation of the history between the Sinju and Uchiha clan that Obito gives Naruto with the conclusion that Naruto and Sasuke are just the same as Ashura and Indra and Madara and Hashirama. Although Obito isn't the most truthful person, most of his story is further cooperated by Hagoromo with the added detail of a reincarnation cycle that would help push this idea that Naruto and Sasuke have officially become rivals by the end of the summit. This is supported by the idea that base Naruto and Sasuke clash and Naruto confirming that they would kill each other if they fought again after looking into Sasuke's. This then leads to them both looking for power-ups that would help them become stronger with their EMS and KCM forms. This is further supported by the relativity between Naruto and Sasuke's bases again when they meet up in the war and even when they go into EMS and KCM forms, helping support the narrative that these are relative power-ups. However, Sasuke is implied to be inferior to Kurama mode Naruto at this point in time Sasuke doesn't take too long to catch up to him, as shown by the end of the Jubito fight, where he's able to make a perfect Susano and fight alongside Kurama Sage Mo Naruto. Correct. Characters being shown to fight alongside each other is a common battle shonen trope to display relativity in a regard. Exactly. In this case, yep. being their progress and their journeys and their powers. This is highlighted in the scene of Sakura catching up to Naruto and Sasuke, which ends in their fighting alongside them, back to back. So, Sasuke should be on the level of Five Kage Summit Sage Mo Naruto, Early War Arc KCM, and Kurama Sage Mo Naruto in his respective forms. Naruto at his peak before meeting Hagoromo is even compared to Hashirama in just chakra amount. There's a couple other things that help support the notion that Naruto and Sasuke are close but not yet on the level of Hashirama and Madara. There are some statements from Tobirama saying Sasuke has Madara's level of potential and Orochimaru saying he'll one day surpass Madara and Sasuke still has room to grow. This is even further supported in chapter 674 where Madara says that Sasuke's Sharingan and his are just alike and suggests that Sasuke has even more potential than Obito did and would have been a better pick if he was just born earlier than the brainwashed Uchiha. Although right. this probably wouldn't apply to any form of Obito with Renegon and above, EMS Sasuke at his peak even being above the Obito that attacked the village and forced Minato to use an advanced flying rising technique to defeat him, will lend credence to him being superior to a live Tobirama who should consistently be below Minato and vastly below Hashirama and Madara. To go over Tobirama's more general scaling, the first misconception to take note of would be Izuna Uchiha. Izuna Uchiha is heavily implied to be on the level of MS Madara with the data book claiming he's next to Madara in ability. Right. Some may use this to say that Madara with his MS should be at least Sasuke level and scaling Tobirama above this. The problem with this is that Izuna's main competition is portrayed to be Tobirama with the data book calling them equals. To then scale this to Sasuke who doesn't always grow by fighting an equal opponent or opponents would be fallacious. For all we know, MS Sasuke just went through more trials than Izuna. We also didn't even see right. a Susano, and even if it would be very reasonable for him to have one, you'd then have to ask how much did he advance it. At best, defeating Izuna Uchiha would make Tobirama casually above all Uchiha who are non-Mangekyo Sharingan users, which doesn't matter here. 
It can be argued that the part 1 Konoha Crush battle does display base Hashirama and Tobirama being comparable in terms of Taijutsu power, which would be fine. Hashirama is shown to be clearly above Tobirama, but this can likely be due to his healing, his wood style, and his vast reserves of chakra he uses to flex on Tobirama to make him calm down. Speaking of Tobirama being calmed down, that chakra flex feat against Sasuke should be something to discuss for the topic. Although Sasuke has a clear work of concern on his face and a sweat mark, he doesn't even instantly activate his Sharingan in response to this threat. Tobirama was however only lifting a singular finger, so this scene isn't likely portraying any dynamic between who would win in a battle between the two, just the general idea of a threat. The last thing about Tobirama is his narrative of being another fast guy just like the 4th Hokage and the Raikage. As mentioned before, his relative showings in Taijutsu to base Hashirama and proficiency of the flying Raijin would highly suggest that Tobirama is super fast. Madara even claims that he once boasted the fastest speed of any shinobi, which is a statement that causes quite a debate at times. While some may say that Madara is referring to a post Hashirama and Madara shinobi world, this isn't the most likely interpretation. Madara in the statement is drawing a contrast between the past and present with the main differences being the Edo Tensei state of Hashirama and Tobirama, while Madara had gotten stronger. The speed of Tobirama's past being brought up is likely in reference to the fact that Madara bodies Tobirama using Raj, which would have likely required him to outspeed the second Hokage. Using the most consistent interpretation of this statement along with other supporting showings, Tobirama should be faster than EMS Madara and Sage on Hashirama. So by going over more general and narrative showings, EMS Sasuke at his peak should beat Tobirama pretty soundly, but Tobirama should be faster than all of his forms. And that's if you take the moderate statement to be interpreted that way. You could also interpret this moderate statement to be that Tobirama is the fastest at some point in time of any shinobi, not necessarily the point in time when him and Hashirama were at their strongest, considering when Madara left the village for a year, he was training and getting stronger in order to fight Hashirama again, and he hadn't seen Tobirama in a year at that point. The next important thing to talk about is stamina. The main reason is basically to say the obvious and point out that any external sources to resupply himself, MS Sasuke gets outlasted and beaten. Tobirama being a legendary Senju with high levels of chakra, alongside the- I just want to say this real quick about speed. Right, It's widely accepted throughout the Naruto fandom that Madara beats Tobirama, right? Yet he's faster than Madara, as stated by Madara himself. Now, the way I interpret that statement when he says you were the fastest shinobi ever in our era, I interpret that as what he's saying. He was the fastest that Madara has ever encountered, right? And yet he beats Tobirama, at least that's what the majority of the Naruto fandom agrees with, which I agree with as well. So, that seems like an inconsistency, or you can say speed isn't the end-all be-all, right? If, this is what I say, to properly rationalize this, if the gap in speed is not significant enough, then speed doesn't automatically suggest a win for, an, for somebody, right? So if the gap is not wide enough, you're not simply just going to blitz somebody just because you're faster. If it's wide enough, then you will blitz, right? That's the way I interpret it as the best way I can properly rationalize how that makes any sense, right? Someone's faster yet loses to someone slower. That's just something interesting to think about, right? Madara is stronger than Tobirama, yet Madara explicitly states that Tobirama was the fastest of their era. Or you can do what Six said and just rationalize, well, well, he's only, he's only suggesting that at one point in time he was the fastest. You'd also suggest that, which also rationalizes it as well ability to control his chakra and teleport would basically give MS Sasuke a no-win situation here simply due to this. Tobirama being quite familiar with the Uchiha and their abilities also gives him an advantage in this regard as he'd be aware from the experience that he could win a battle against Sasuke by simply outlasting him. So from here, we'll be focusing on Sasuke mainly from his fight with Kabuto alongside Itachi. Going over the more specific stats of the characters, it has to also be called out that Tobirama is one of the characters who has very little AP or durability showings. In terms of his Taijutsu, if you want to say he's base Hashirama and Edo Madara level, this would mean his durability is above the likes of the 4th Raikage's AP, going off the fact that Madara was able to tank his punch. 
Toby Rama's AP should also not be too far from this if he is comparable to base Hashirama, who was shown to be able to clash with Edomadara. Going off of the part one Hiruzen versus Rochimaru battle, you could also argue Toby Rama is physically above old Hiruzen who can match the level of Sanin. Although this is all nice, it clearly doesn't stack up to the Kabuto fight Sasuke who has reached above Sanin level power with just his MS, except he doesn't tire out so easily anymore. Even if you were to bring up things like Tobirama forcing one-eyed Sage Madara to use the Susano to block his water needles, it's a sneak attack that Sasuke would likely anticipate due to his high analytical abilities. We also don't know much about Madara's durability, except that it should be somewhere above the previous showings, which doesn't change the conclusion of this battle. Sasuke's speed should be comparable to KCM Naruto around this time, using the fourth Raikage who stated to have speed not inferior to Minato. Naruto's ability to perceive this character's top speed and activating the body flicker before getting touched should be something Sasuke should be capable of, if not better. Sasuke's ability of insight has been praised by even Orochimaru as a child, so it's not crazy to say that Sasuke with his EMS should be capable of doing something like Naruto did and reacting with a dojutsu. This wouldn't necessarily scale Sasuke to A in Minato's full speed, as A gives Naruto a warning before coming at him in a linear fashion, making it much easier for him to react to. Regardless, this will show Sasuke's perception and reaction speed should be able to keep up with Tobirama to a level. Unless you think Tobirama is just much faster than Minato, which is just funny. Yeah, the best you can try not. to argue with Tobirama <laughs> exactly. here is outlasting his opponent, but considering Sasuke having the EMS, this is probably just not going to be the case. Sasuke also has abilities to deal with Tobirama's speed, such as guarding himself with the Susano and Amaterasu, and spreading the black flames all over the battlefield. Even if you can argue he can't tag Tobirama via normal means, in terms of Sasuke's forms versus a live Tobirama, Tobirama seems to only be above MS Sasuke due to stamina issues. Now, if you notice one thing that's been put off for most of this video, it was Edo Tobirama with his tandem explosive tags. This jutsu was used for the purpose of attacking Jubito, despite Hashirama claiming that he is stronger than him. Considering Obito has even used a true secret orb shield to block this jutsu, any form of Sasuke is not looking too good against this jutsu in specific. This is an insanely overpowered jutsu alongside the ability of infinitely regenerating stamina and immortality which just kind of makes this fight a little too easy for Tobirama, with him getting a very easy win condition. Even without this jutsu, Sasuke being able to defeat an Edo is very questionable, with his possible best option being to constantly burn somebody with the flames of Matarasu and just leaving them burning in a hole or something like that. But that's going to wrap up the video. Just for a quick conclusion, good so scale. everyone knows, any form of MS Sasuke is probably going to lose to Tobirama, rather that be Edo or Alive. EMS Sasuke is likely going to beat a live Tobirama, Agree. and then if EMS Sasuke fights Edo Tobirama, he's likely going to get beaten due to his inability to seal him and Tobirama's tandem explosive tags. But that's going to wrap up the video. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like on it, and you know, yeah, Edo's a problem because it's sealing, well. right? Yeah, and agree. besides that, have a nice day. Peace. All right, that's the video. Definitely want to get my thoughts on it. It's pretty well done. I agree with just about everything said. Now going down the versions, right? MS Sasuke against Alive Tobirama most likely loses right? up until the Five Kage Summit, which when he starts to develop speed that's relative to A, right, the fourth Ray Kage, who's relative to Minato to some extent. Minato's still faster. So from that you can extrapolate that Sasuke possibly has a speed to contend with someone to contend with someone that has a speed of Tobirama, right? However, I think his stamina would be an issue. And Tobirama being a Senju, you can extrapolate that he has high levels of chakra, similar to his brother, and similar to Hashirama's granddaughter, Tsunade, right? So you can you can extrapolate that he probably has high levels of chakra, more experience, and is familiar with an Uchiha arsenal, right? He's familiar with an Uchiha arsenal. So I tend to lean towards Tobirama. He most likely wins alive. Edo most definitely because he doesn't have stamina issues, so that would even be probably more of a clear victory for Tobirama. Now, EMS, it gets interesting for sure. EMS, right, EMS Sasuke was relative to KCM2 Sage Mode Naruto when they were fighting Jubito. Someone that Hashirama stated he is weaker than, right? And they were not to say that they were superior to Jubito because they weren't, but they were able to at least contend with the guy with Hashirama flat out saying, I can't beat him, right? who's clearly in superior to Tobirama. 
So Sasuke's speed has gone up significantly. I think the Naruto fandom can agree KCM2 stage when Naruto has blatantly superior speed to Tomorama and Minato for that matter. He's blatantly superior as, as, as far as speed is concerned. And everything has gone up for Sasuke at this point. His AP, his durability, his speed. He's a much more powerful and higher caliber Shinobi. So from that you can extrapolate that that version more than likely defeats Tobirama. Has superior speed, most likely has superior AP, ha has less stamina issues, can use a perfect Susano, has Amaterasu, etc. Right, so he can most definitely deal with someone the likes of Tobirama. And probably would defeat him. As far as Edo, Six made a good point. He can't really seal the guy. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, you won't be able to seal him. So he would simply get outlasted. And eventually become overwhelmed. And fall to Togorama's hand, right? Because he just doesn't have the sealing techniques. And his stamina would eventually give out. Togorama doesn't have to worry about that as an Edo. So that's the problem with Edos, right? If you don't have sealing jutsu, if you don't have fun jutsu, you're going to get defeated most likely. You're going to get defeated. Because you can't hold them. You can't take away their soul and send them back to the afterlife right so that's the main problem with fighting in Edo especially Hokage level Edo like Tobirama but this is an interesting topic because there are ambiguous factors that come into play like Sasuke's speed at MS and Tobirama's overall caliber as a shinobi with him having little feats overall when looking at the manga so it's definitely a debatable topic which makes it interesting right you need to look at every minuscule angle of any of every minuscule detail to determine and conclude who will most likely win when exploring the various versions of the respective characters, right? So empirical evidence definitely matters, but at some point when every little minuscule detail is touched upon, you have to start using rationale and logic to conclude what's the most rational interpretation, right? That starts to matter as time goes on. So this is one of those, right? There's so, there's some of the there's several topics that are like this KCM Minato versus Hashirama KCM2 Naruto versus Hashirama Naruto versus Sasuke those really contentious and ambiguous topics are the ones where interpretation and rationale must be taken into account because empirical evidence won't necessarily be enough to give a definitive conclusion right? because there's just a lot of ambiguity and contentious factors when formulating a conclusion so this is one of those very interesting six gave a great take and I basically agree with most of what he had to say. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear you guys' opinions on this. I'm sure you guys have differentiating opinions, especially when it comes to contentious topics such as this one. And if you have any other recommendations, also let me know in the comments. But it's going to wrap it up, folks, and I'll catch you in the next video. It's Jay Degree signing out. Peace.